All right, welcome back to Conversation with the Browns. This is part two of our episode, asking the question, what is mine to do? We're going to get more into conversation, share with you more about how this has helped me, helped my wife. It actually helped our marriage because I'm not doing everything I think I need to do because I'm asking a qualifying question. What is mine to do? So the way you the way you did it was okay. This is mine to do because I want this. I want this to be tidy. Um, We need to help train them. But in the process of my do, maybe what mine is to do is to organize this in a way that says, "Hey, kids, if your stuff is not in the right place, if I'm picking it up, it's going to go here," because that brings you peace. But it was yours to do. You you didn't feel like you had to make them do it, but because of you, you weighed out what I really want here. How can I train them? How can I have peace? It was yours to do that thing. So I think that both examples, I think, work well. And that's why the question, I think, is so powerful because it's a question for me. What is mine to do? Mm -hmm. I also, there's another piece that I think that question of what is mine to do has been helpful because often I'm engaged in something that is none of my business. And that's where this book I had told you about, um, there's a quote from this book. It's called The Inner Voice of Love by Henry Nouwen. And there's just a quote in here that before I even heard the what is mine to do question, um, this has just stuck with me for a really long time. And so I'm just going to read it and then you can tell me what you think. He, he's kind of talking about the fact that each person, each one of us kind of has a unique way of being present and that it's important for us to know what it, what that is. And he says, when you get exhausted, frustrated, overwhelmed, or run down, your body is saying to you that you are doing things that are none of your business. <laughs> Say it again. Read it again. When you get exhausted, frustrated, overwhelmed, or run down, your body is saying to you that you are doing things that are none of your business. Huh. The piece that I like about this, he goes, he goes on. It's in um, just a longer thought. But he goes on to talk about the fact that that does not mean that... Um, Faithfulness in life will not include suffering, true suffering, hardship. Um, but I think this resonates with me because I have experienced, I know in my gut when I am doing something that is really hard and it is exactly what is mine to do. Right, right. So it, it doesn't mean that everything, if you're just doing what is, it's not like a like total positivity in a like, if you do the right thing, everything's going to be rosy and you'll never face any challenges. It's... There could be real suffering and hardship in something that is exactly what, what you do, should right. be doing. And I, I mean, again, with children, there are things where parenting can include grief and hardship and sorrow. And there's, I mean, there's just, but, but there are spaces where I know this is exactly what, that this is exactly mine to do. Right. But then there are other times where, and that's where I think, to me, that distinction between when you're exhausted and frustrated and run down and at least stopping and asking, am I doing something that is none of my business? And that's what I, I guess I like that more, to ask yourself that additional question. When you're feeling that way, is this something that's really my business? I can, I can see trying to orchestrate, like just for an example, you know, somebody else is on the PTA at school and you just think something should be done a different way and you try to mosey your way into it and you start doing this, but people aren't listening to you and you just feel like just maybe that's not yours to do. Maybe that's not for you. Maybe it's none of your business. Yeah, maybe it's none of your business and you need to step back from that. So I, I can see how it's a great question to ask. With all this is going on, is this mine? Is this is it my business or is my do? Or even, you know, maybe you're not even talking to the person that has to do anything. What are you talking to everybody else? And you're gossiping and you're doing, trying to make all these moves and all this kind of stuff. And it's exhausting. And it's frustrating. And to step back and say, is this even my business? Yep. I think some, in some ways the internet has contributed to that, to making us feel like we need to have an opinion about everything, that we need to be informed about everything, that we need to give our input, that there's, for some reason, maybe we're not engaged and active in the appropriate ways if we aren't all up in everything. And I think... Sometimes there truly are things where I can care about that and think that it does matter and also know that in this season and in my life, this is just none of my business. Because often we are spend, I can find myself expending energy in a space that I actually have no intention of doing the really hard work of showing up and making a difference. I don't have the capacity for that. It really is truly none of my business. And, and it is wasting energy in spaces where I could be using that energy for places that really, truly are my work to do in the world and trusting, even if I know there is another space that really matters, trusting that 
if I get my nose out of it and just show up and am faithful to what is mine to do, that that then leaves space and invites others to show up to what is theirs. Right. That made me, that got a lot of thoughts running because you, people are all making comments about what they should, especially right now with school, you know, with school, distance learning, hybrid model, um, full, what they call it, they were saying five days a week, full time, whatever they call it, kids at school normally, the way it was mm. before. And people are, schools are making decisions, school boards are making decisions. And I read some of the comments and people are just vehemently upset, saying this, calling names, saying things are stupid, you're dumb, we don't, you know, all these things. And I sometimes step back because I remember specifically sometimes during the, some, in the past uh, politician or the presidential elections or even politicians, before they were elected, they would say they would do X, Y, and Z. But come to find out, once they got elected, they had more information now, and they can do X, Y, and Z because now they have full information. And so just today, I caught myself saying, somebody said something, and I was like, I don't have enough information to say why that's stupid, but that feels dumb. <laughs> like, like, that decision does not make sense to me, and maybe it's because I don't have enough information to, mm -hmm. to say why that makes sense. But right now, from what I know, that doesn't make sense, but maybe there's a lot more information that's available to that person who has to make that decision that I don't have access to that would make that make sense. You know what I'm saying? So I think. And it's at least worth asking the question, is that your business? Yeah. Because there may be spaces where you really are the best person to get involved and get the information. Maybe this is yours. Maybe this is yours to do is to do the hard work and get a more nuanced understanding and really dig in but I think sometimes we are too, we're a little too free with our uninformed and, uh, opinions, idea, yeah, about, opinions. <laughs> about things. And it is just so interesting to me that often the, I mean, you find that in science and in so many different spaces that the, the more experience and the closer someone is to being the expert, the less, the less straightforward and clear cut their opinions are. Yeah, yeah. Whenever you listen to, you know, a doctor or a scientist talking about some medical thing and someone wants to. Like, so this is what this study says. And they're like, well, actually, and it's just always more complicated than your that. Your word. What's your In word? Send me your word. New one. There we go. <laughs> there's, there's usually lots of context. And in this, they always are qualifying their opinion. It'll, here's my opinion based on all these qualifications. Or they are very quick to say, I don't have enough information to ha give an opinion, give an informed opinion on that. And it is interesting to me that often there are spaces where I'm real quick to give an opinion when I have a very small amount of information. Maybe when you start, we, we start the amp wheel and we copyrighted that. It's copyrighted. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we need to copyright or start this new phrase, what you just said. I don't have enough information right now. However, based on what I don't know, I think this. <laughs> you know, something that affect that, that maybe we should start that new trend because I think that would be a better way to approach some of these subjects. Based, I don't have all the information, but However, based on what I know, my limited knowledge, I think this. Cause that's well, that's you just said that. I like that that was how you started it of, I think that's dumb, but I don't know enough. To, <laughs> I, don't know. I, I don't know enough about this to actually have an opinion, but it seems dumb to yeah, me. Based on what I know, that doesn't seem right. But if we would just give that, that accurate qualification yeah, when yeah. we have an opinion, not that's stupid, but saying, I don't actually have enough information. To know I've, recently, I, I've just humbly will say, I've been wrong about some stuff. I had one opinion when I saw this amount of information. Yep. When more information came out, then my opinion kind of changed because I had now I know something new, and now I am I'm I'm on a different side, so to speak, or I think differently because I have more information now. And so I think I want to start my stuff with saying, "Hey, based on information I know, these are my thoughts." Because there's it seems to be more information coming out about all kind of things, whether it's all kind of stuff. And I don't want to yep. get to a lot of specifics, but a lot of things are coming out, and you start to go, "Okay." Now that I see that, now I know that, based on this information, my thoughts are this. And that's why I like this question of what is mine to do also, because it is, it feels dynamic enough. It's not asking me to state once and for all who I am as a person and that this is a universal thing that will never change. Often, the answer to that question today is going to be different tomorrow. And right. even moment to moment, often in parenting, like the example you had given before, sometimes when a child is throwing a fit, the answer, what is mine to do, can be different. Sometimes it is, I need to wrap him up in a hug. And sometimes it's, 
I need to hold the line and be firm on a timeout that I don't even want to. Like, I don't even feel like happening right now. (laughs) And and honestly, I don't always know which one's which. But incorporating this question as a practice just helps me to continue to come back to it and try to show up and do my best. I don't have to have it right every time. I don't have to be an expert at any of the things. I just, it helps me stay present and committed to things that really matter. Right. For me. By the way, you did a good job this morning with that timeout and, you know, hug. <laughs> you did a good job. And that is, that is, that, and I think, did you ask yourself that question this morning? Or just, just kind of looking back retrospectively, that's kind of the question you kind of. I mean, constantly, I think there's a, that's been a habit that I try to include as just a constant part of, mm-hmm. of my day. And probably for, again, like we've said, because there is, there are relationships and, um, issues in the world that really do matter to me. And I know that my tendency when the stakes are really high is actually to figuratively go to sleep to it all. I mean, truly (laughs) I I do then also take real naps, but when the stakes are really high, I can tend to check out and my kids matter too much to me for me to check out, um, on, on them and on all of the little details. And when, when everything feels, when the drama is really high, my gut response can be to kind of check out on it. And I want, this really matters to me. This is, being a parent to our kids, being a mom is mine to do. Right. And I, half the time, do not know what, it's not, it's not like I come in and I've got, even all, even reading all the books. I was just talking to my sister last night and the, just the reality of there has n- never been, um, this combination of me and who I am and the things that I bring to the table and this child and who they are and what they bring to the table. And so there are books that are helpful and talking with friends is helpful, but ultimately it does come down to what is, this question is helpful for me. What is mine to do? Because no one can actually tell me exactly in this moment with this child, um, whether a timeout or a hug is the most right. important thing. And, but choosing to stay present and ask that question helps, um, is really, is really helping me. And it helps me. Then I get the feedback. If I am present in the situation, then I, half the time, I'm like, well, and that was not the thing I was supposed <laughs> to do. And then I get to learn from it and, and I, you know, do better next time. That's a great point, too, because I don't want people to think that by asking this question, you're always going to get an immediate correct answer. But it's a great practice. For an example, right now, the toughest thing for me is I'm asking that question, what is mine to do in light of all of the stuff going on with social justice and racism talk, all these things, what is mine to do? And I, I haven't got a very clear answer in a lot of areas. So I'm still waiting. I was talking to somebody yesterday I just met and we had a long conversation about it. He's like, well, thank you for waiting because so many people are just reacting. And he said that these are his words. So many people are reacting and not responding. And I was like, I just did a whole 45 minute workshop on that on Zoom to some teachers about reacting versus responding. Reacting is the actual knee jerk circumstance based where responding is more identity based. Who are you? What do you bring into the table? And so I'm, I've been kind of asking that question, what is mine to do? Cause it'd be so easy to react and jump into this area and then jump into that area. But how can I use my voice, my talents, my gifts to speak in the situation that I believe I need to be engaged in, but what is mine to do? And so I think it's a, it's a great question to ask. It's been for me, even if the answer is delayed, even or if you need a lot more. Or it doesn't feel relevant to the question that you're actually asking. Well, right. So if it, if it doesn't feel relevant because I don't feel like I need to jump into action right away, I need to still ask that question because I do have a unique voice. I do have something to say. And it's also let me understand this, too, that I do bring value to the table. Sometimes I don't think I do. Sometimes oh, it's for everybody else to do. But sometimes you talk about the idea of maybe frustration, whatever, sometimes that same feeling can be like that nagging, that that knocking. Maybe there is something you can contribute to this, but asking the question can bring clarity to what you bring. And I, don't, I guess I don't want people to feel who listen to this who may feel everybody in the world is telling you what you should be doing. I mean, the internet is, that's what the internet is for now. <laughs> not only just informing you what you're doing, shaming you if you're not doing it, and all these other things where you step back and say, okay, that's great you feel that way, but what is mine to do? And I, I remember talking to somebody um, who is a, is a wealthy person. They own a couple of businesses um, and everybody's trying to get them to do all these things. And 
the, the reason they're wealthy because they know how to invest their money <laughs> and they invest their money in certain things. And some people will tell you, you need to be doing this with your money. No, what is mine to do? And I'm clear on that. And that's what they're doing. And so I think for me, it may not be money. And sometimes it is like we we support some causes that we believe in because we we I don't feel like I can duplicate what they're doing. Uh, they are, they've got they've got a great skill in this. I don't think I need to go and do it with them. But guess what? I can support them. They haven't invited me, by the way. <laughs> but I can support them financially in this area to do what they do because I believe in that. So I think it's a, it's been a, a great question for me. And it, it really makes me pat myself on the back for listening to my wife, too. <laughs> I mean, I've heard you ask that question so often. So I feel good that I actually listened. And I'm applying something that, that you have just used yourself. And I have found, which is maybe what you're speaking to, that if I have asked the question and done the best that I could, that I knew in that moment in answer to that question, if it falls flat or doesn't work out the way that I thought it, would I always, um, looking back, am more happy, even with the, the learning that happens from that than when I knew in my gut, this, it, like when I kind of had that mm -hmm. sense in my gut that the, I shouldn't be doing this, but somebody told me or I was listening to other voices or I just thought it mattered to someone else. And I went for it anyway. Um, and sometimes that ended up working out great. But when that falls flat, I knew I I knew better. And <laughs> and the learning just is always, it's not that it's always going to work out great. But there is something about being faithful to what you, the best you know, and what is yours to do in the moment. Um, even, even if then it doesn't go the way that you thought it should. Yeah. Well, thank you for bringing that question to mind, and uh, I'm glad we're both applying it. And honestly, those of you who are listening, I know this is a conversation between me and you, but we know somebody's listening. Hopefully. Are you listening? Are you listening out there? If you listen out there, we would love to hear what you have to say. We'd love to get your comments on this, and you can leave your comments several ways. We actually have a phone number. You can text and leave a voice message that we may use on a, a new show or an upcoming show. That number is 530-535-8121. You can leave a voicemail or text and give us your thoughts or a question for topic for a future show. And you can also leave a comment on our website, lifewiththebrowns.com. And tell us what you think about the question, what is mine to do? And I think it is theirs to do to leave a comment. Well, I would really like to hear if you're willing to share, if you think about this next season. Uh, there is so much that is out of our control in this next season and so much that is unknown. And if you really just thought about this season and asked that question, is there something that is really clear to you? This is yours to do there. I'm sure that you have a whole lot of things that are still just open questions. If I mean, if they're anything like us, there's a whole lot of things <laughs> that are still open questions. But I would guess that there are probably one or two things that if you paused and took some time, you already know in the next season, this is yours to do. Right. And I think that it's helpful to get some clarity on that. That's a great question. I think your question is more deeper than mine. I was going to ask them to leave us a five-star rating on, on Apple Podcasts. That's what I, I was you, They next. can do that too. That, that maybe, that too. That's, maybe that's theirs There's to, to do. do. <laughs> hey, it is yours to do, hopefully. And if it's not, hey, we appreciate you just listening. And maybe it's yours to do to share this with someone else. Maybe you know someone else who's struggling with what's their business, <laughs> what they should be doing. Maybe just share with them, hey, check out this podcast where the Browns discuss the question, what is mine to do? And again, it is mine to do right now to thank you for listening, for watching uh, this podcast. And uh, we really appreciate that because um, whether you watch or not, I enjoy these conversations. Or whether you listen or not, I enjoy these conversations with my wife. But hopefully you join them too. And hopefully you will join us for the next episode of Conversations with the Browns. Thanks for listening. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>